So in this video, we're going to demonstrate how we can set up Burp Suite with our Android devices to be able to intercept HTTP traffic between the app and the server. So in general, Burp Suite is a really great tool for Android penetration testing because a lot of Android apps may communicate to a server using HTTP requests. And if that is the case, Port Swigger can intercept those requests and allow us to do a lot of interesting things with it. Um, it can teach us a lot of things about how the application communicates with the server. And we may be able to modify requests in order to get some attacks working through that. So we'll take a look at some of the things that we can find with that in the next video. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate how we can set up Burp Suite on our devices because it's a little bit of a process to get it up and running. And I want to walk through that with you to make sure that you're able to get it running and follow along with that. So on the Port Swigger website, which is the creators of Burp Suite, we can get the Burp Suite program as the community edition. So you can just say get community and download the um, application. The community edition is great. It will allow you to be able to do everything that you need to do um, for these videos. And really most penetration testing can be done with the community tools. The professional enterprise give you a lot of um, good like uh, automated scanning tools and that sort of idea. But since we're just working on like one off applications, the community edition works great for us. Once you have it downloaded, you can launch it and you'll be able to create a new project. So let me walk through that process with you. I'll just close off my existing Burp Suite window and let's go ahead and open up Burp Suite. So once it's installed, you can open it. Um, you'll see that in general, you have um, the option to select what kind of project you want for um, the community edition. You can only do a temporary project so you can't save any of your results. Um, so we'll just select temporary and click next. And it'll ask us what kind of configuration we want to use. Um, in this case, we want to use the default configuration. We don't really have anything special to do here. And usually I don't. So we'll just leave that as default for now and start up the Burp Suite. So the main thing that we want to do here is we want to set up a proxy server between ourselves and the Android application. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the proxy tab here. I'm going to go under the options tab. And I'm going to add a new proxy listener. That new proxy listener is going to be bound to port 8081. And I'm going to have it listen on all interfaces. Uh, just the reason why I do this is because it's easier to capture the traffic listening on all interfaces. You'll see by default, it captures on localhost on port 8080. But for the Android device, it's easy to just set it to all interfaces and capture based on our, um, our local IP address. So I'll demonstrate how that works. So we'll press OK and then we'll press Yes to allow it to listen on all interfaces. And then we're going to come over to our Android device here and we're going to set it up to work with this proxy. The way we do that is we go into our settings here. From settings, we're going to click on network and internet. Then from here, we're going to go into Wi-Fi. Inside of Wi-Fi, I'm going to press on this gear for the settings. Right here, I'm going to press on this pencil for edit. Under advanced options, I'm going to click on proxy and set it to manual. For the proxy host name, you're going to want to enter the IP address of your computer. You can use your local IP. So for me, that's 192.168.2.20. Um, I'm just going to confirm that that is true. Yep, that is correct. And then we're going to do it on port 8081 because that's where I set up my proxy for was 8081. And then everything else can stay the same and we can press on save. So at this point, we've set up our proxy between the Android device and the Burp Suite um, proxy. The main thing that we need to do now is we just need to set up our SSL certificate to have Burp Suite's certificate. This will allow us to intercept encrypted communication as well so that we can actually see it and be able to utilize HTTPS. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to click on Open Browser in Burp Suite, so this right here. And then you're going to, um, I'm going to turn off the intercept here, just otherwise it will keep popping up. So again, under proxy, we're going to turn off this intercept by clicking here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go HTTP colon backslash backslash uh, burp. And then inside of here, we're just going to click on CA certificate. This is the encryption certificate that's used by the burp proxy. So we can go ahead and download this. You might have to press on keep there just to allow it to keep this file. And then just keep in mind where this file is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place it in this directory here that I've been working with. So you see, I have this copy here. 
Now, one change that I need to make here is you see that it by default saves as a .der file. We just change this um, extension to .cer. We don't have to do anything else. We just have to change the extension. The reason being is because Android expects a .cer file. Um, so the .der file won't work by default. Once we've done this, we're gonna head over to Android Studio. And you'll see here, I have this device file explorer section here. If you don't have this, you can go into view tool windows and click on device file explorer. What this allows you to do is it allows you to see all of the files on your emulator. So I can see all the files that this emulator currently has available to it. I'm going to scroll down until I see SD card and I'm going to expand SD card and then I'm going to click on download. On download, you should right click and press upload. We're going to upload our certificate file. So you see here, I'm going to take the cacert.sir file and press OK. And now you see that that's been uploaded to our device. So now we've put the certificate onto our device. From here, we just need to tell Android to use that certificate. And the way we do this is I typically search up here and I search for um, certificate. And you'll see here, there's an option to install certificate and then one for trusted certificates as well. I'm gonna utilize both of these. So I'm gonna go install a certificate first. We click on install certificates. We come over here to downloads and then we click on CA search. I'm going to go ahead and just call this burp because it's associated with burp suite and the credential will be used for VPN and apps. So we're going to utilize this for our app interceptions. We'll press on OK and that will install that certificate for us. Now I'm going to go back to our search here. I'm going to press on trusted credentials. Underneath here, I'm going to press on um, trusted credentials. And you'll see here that we now have this user port swigger certificate enabled. So now that we have this certificate enabled, we should now be able to intercept our traffic reliably, right? So that's the main way that we're going to be going about this process. So we've got our certificates all set up here now. And now from here, we should be able to intercept traffic between ourselves and the actual device itself. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can actually utilize that and leverage it to be able to um, check out the traffic that's being sent to and from our application, be able to intercept that and be able to utilize it to potentially find and exploit some vulnerabilities.